Hello and welcome to your first tutorial on how to use Roll20.net. I am Kadek Shmoo and I will be your instructor for these tutorials. In this tutorial I will show you how to sign up for your Roll20 account, which is free and easy, so don't worry. Once you have your account, I'll show you how to set up your first campaign. Now to get started, you gotta go to Roll20.net and it get to this lovely page where I got a bunch of details about everything. Uh, feel free to scroll through it, read up on it. But we're gonna jump right into it here and we're gonna click this button right here. Create your free account. And just send us this form. You're gonna simply fill out this form. You can choose whether or not you want to have the Roll20 newsletter for the latest news updates and such, but you want to make sure you agree with the terms of services. Feel free to read the terms of services if you choose. Obviously, it's always nice to read the fine print, and otherwise, we're going to hit click continue. So now that we've created your account, we can start your first campaign. Now, what we want to do is we're going to click right here the create new campaign. So we click this, it takes us to the next screen of starting a new campaign. Now we have different sections of here, we'll go through them all. We have the naming of your campaign. And then tags. Now if you're playing a private game with just your friends, don't worry about tags. Tags are used to find other gamers in the Roll20 community and to publicly share your game so that they can join and play with you. Again, if, if it's a private game, don't worry about tags. For the sake, we're just gonna act like it's a private game and I'm not gonna add any tags because this is not relevant. Uh, after that, you have two options. You can add a character sheet template from many, many, many different games here. Uh, this actually puts a character sheet as if it is the actual physical face-to-face -face character sheet the paper ones into the into the game but you have that option the character sheet we're gonna go with none for right now you can always add them in the future if you want to you don't have to add them right now the other option is if you don't have anything set up yet you don't have a story you don't you're just jumping in and you want to play with your friends or people in the community but you want to run the game you can choose a module. Now, a module is pretty much a pre-made campaign in Roll20. It's like getting a pre-made adventure, and instead of having to make your own pre-made event, or you know, you have the pre-made adventure, you read it up, and you make your own maps for it and everything, this has already done that for you. So you could select, you know, depending on the game you're playing, depends on if there is a module available for you. Um, I got the Pathfinder one right here. You know, if you're playing Pathfinder, you could click this one, some of them do cost money, if not all of them. Uh, but you'd click on them and go through and you have a module and you'd show all. We're not gonna pick a module because we're gonna show you how to make them from scratch. So that's all there really is to setting up this part of your campaign. We click, I'm ready, Let's go to your campaign. Now it loads up the campaign screen and you got a nice little quick overview of how to get started for the sake of teaching you all this I'm gonna skip over this because that's I'm gonna teach you all that anyways uh, feel free to read it or to watch it though so now we have our interface our campaign screen and another tutorial I'm gonna go over the interface of all this so the only thing we're gonna want to do right now is come over to the top corner here to where there's a gear mouse over it says my settings and scroll all the way down and exit game I know, we just got into it, but we're gonna exit game. The reason we're gonna exit game is because there's still some more stuff we want we can set up and more options I wanna show you uh, before actually getting into the actual campaign building and setup part. Well, it takes us back to our recent campaigns page. Now we have my first campaign here. Well, we can either click on the my first campaign or we click on view details to get to the next part. Then we click on my campaign gives us to the details section of your campaign. 
to give you more details. Now you can add a photo here if so you can get a picture of, let's say you have, your campaign is involved on a bunch of islands in the Caribbean or something, on it's pirate stuff. You could put a pirate flag here. You could import any JPEG, PNG, or GIF and to help get a little more class to your campaign. It's a campaign icon. A uh, nice little thing, nice little, little feature. Um, going down, we'll just take care of the side panel here for uh, first. You launch the campaign. We don't want to do that. That takes us to the campaign screen. You can launch in Google Hangouts. If you want to use Google Hangouts for cameras and, and microphones and all that stuff, and you don't want to use the built-in stuff uh, and other features of Google Hangouts, you can use launch it in Google Hangouts. Very, very important uh, icon or button is invite players. The reason why that's very important is if this is a private game, you got to invite your friends. You need to know their email addresses. It does provide a link if you can share it on TeamSpeak or Skype or, or Google Hangouts, whatever program you use, uh, so they can get to the game. But that's a very important button so you can get your, your friends in there. We have the copy and extend campaign. Let's say you got some really nice features set up in your campaign and a lot of your pages are already pre-set up for the sizes and, and the grid spacing and all that stuff. And you want to transfer all it over to a new campaign. You don't have to remake it all. Well, you can copy this campaign over, change everything and, and you're good to go. You know, change the, the name and, and stuff like that and you're good to go. You can also, let's say you get a lot of clutter and you got a lot of pages in this campaign uh, and you're getting cluttered and things are getting all mismatched and it's hard to, to keep it organized. Well, you can extend the campaign and create a whole other like, part two, basically, with this button. Then we got the chat archive. And that's going to be blank right now because this is a brand new campaign. But you can view, review everything people have typed in the chat, all their dice rolls, all that kind of stuff. Nice little feature. Campaign settings goes back to being able to add your character sheets um, and that kind of stuff. Uh, then you got the clearing the chat archive, which again, right now, there's nothing in there to begin with. So it doesn't matter. And then we always have the delete campaign. If you no longer are using this campaign, don't want it, don't need it, whatever reason you feel like deleting it, you can delete it. On the top navigation, we have the details which we're on right now. You can tell it's bold. Discussion forms, which it's a form for your campaign. Post information here for your players. Have your players post information here, such as maybe links to their character sheets or their character sheets if you're not using the character sheet template. Mythweavers.com is a great site for character sheets. Uh, Auto-calculate stuff. You could have them post the links into here. You could have a sticky, which actually appears down here, but we'll get into that. Then next, you have a journal. Journals are kind of Roll20's character sheets um, outside of the character sheet template. It's their own stuff they had before they added the character sheet templates. It also allows you to view the handouts that you give in the game. You can give like special notes that only certain people can see um, to help like this person only knows this information this person only knows this information You can see them all in here without having to go into the actual campaign screen and Then we have looking for players listing you can create a, a Listing for the fact that you're looking for for players to come join your campaign you Go back here, and then you have the the chat archive again, which again, there's nothing in there because we haven't done anything yet well Next, we have your, you know, you can rename the campaign if you want. Uh, easily, simple right there. And then below that, you can choose which one you're playing. Now, I do Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 tutorials um, on my channel. I do, I, I play Dungeons & Dragons 3.5. That's my, my main game, basically, that I play. So I'm going to pick that one right there. Um, but, as you can see, you can pick, you know, multiple ones. Depending on what you're playing, depending on how you're doing it, um, you know, you can pick all different kinds, all different kinds of game settings. But you don't necessarily have to select this. You can leave this blank. It works just fine. You can set the game up how you want without ever picking one. This is just for them to know what version or what game you're playing. And then you can pick the date. We'll say tomorrow at 8 p.m. 
8.20. Time it is right now. We'll be playing. That's what the next game will be. Yeah. And so people can come on here, the players can come on here, or if you open it up to the community, they'll know when the next game is going to be, what game you're playing, and the name of it. And they'll even see the, the campaign I got. So then below that, you have a little description here. Whoops, I got to be heavy clicked. You know, and, and a nice little description of what your game is. Uh, might be helpful for the community if it's, again, if it's an open game. And then below that, you have which players have accepted your invite or are ready to play, you know, and are in, are in the setup already. Following that, you have a section that is pretty much like a window to the discussion forum. It'll post the most recent campaign discussions. Now this reverts back to what I said where you can make a sticky note, a sticky post from your discussion form and it'll appear here. So if you have some really important information you want your players to know about, you can post them here. And then tell them, hey, remember to check the discussion forms for any updates about the campaign. That's really all there is towards uh, setting up your first campaign, getting all the nitty gritty small little details down, but details that could be quite important depending on how you're running the game and who you're playing with. You've done it. You've created your first Roll20 account and you've taken steps to making your very first campaign on Roll20. In the next tutorial, I will go into a lot more details about the actual interface of the campaign screen. Remember to leave a comment below if you have any questions. Please like and share this video, and remember to subscribe for more. Check out my Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 edition tutorials if you want to learn how to play, and you could incorporate Roll20 with it. I use Roll20 in those tutorials. Could be quite helpful if that is something you're looking to learn to play. Otherwise, again, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Chaotic Shmoo, and I'll see you next time. Bye, 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 bye.